Greetings. I'm Alexander Puller, Director of Assistive Technology and Consumer Database Systems here at the Massachusetts Commission for the Blind. And thank you for affording me this time to discuss assistive technology and the assistive technology unit here at MCB. I've been at the Commission since 2009, and I have been in my current role as Unit Director since 2012. I am supported by Evan Silver, Assistant Director of the Unit, Richard Flint, our dedicated vocational rehabilitation trainer who also runs our technical help desk, and six assistive technology specialists who cover the Commonwealth from North Adams to Promise Town and all the points and islands in between. William Hirsch covers Western Mass and is assigned to our Springfield office. Brendan Finn covers Central Mass and is in Worcester. And Margaret Gaffney covers the South Shore, Cayman Islands and is based out of our New Bedford office. We also have Frank Ventura who covers our Metro West and Core 128 communities. James Verrill covers the North Shore and Merrimack Valley. And Dennis Avey primarily covers the core neighborhoods of the city of Boston. Frank, James, and Dennis are all assigned to the Boston office of NCB. We also have a team of support staff, Mary Chuck, Alvin Calderon, and Joseph Trudeau, who do a lot of the behind the scenes work that allows our AT unit to be successful and operates as we need to, to address the needs of those we serve. Combined, the assistive technology unit brings nearly 200 combined years of experience in this field to work alongside our colleagues in VR services to deliver the best services and support for our consumers. MCB provides the highest quality vocational rehabilitation and social services to Massachusetts residents who are legally blind and visually impaired, leading to their independence and full community participation. The Assistive Technology Unit supports that mission by providing adaptive devices and technical consulting to individuals who are blind and to employers to help in the workplace, classroom, and the management of consumer at home. But what exactly is Assistive Technology? Well, assistive technology, AT for short, is an umbrella term to include assistive, adaptive, and rehabilitative devices for individuals who are blind. MCB AT program provides critical computer and adaptive equipment training to consumers to increase, maintain, or improve their functional capabilities. Provided primarily to vocational rehabilitation, or VR consumers, AT services includes deployment and training of the usage of software programs and or devices such as screen readers that turn on regular computers into talking personal computers. AT also includes the process used in selecting, locating, and using technology to perform activities such as daily living independently or even with assistance. But the best to understand AT is to understand what kind of technology we're working with. MCB can assist with several forms of this technology. One is video magnification technology. That would include desktop and portable video magnification devices and screen magnification software. We also work with screen readers and voice technologies such as optical character recognition devices that can scan printed material and read those documents back to you with a digital voice and software like Dragon Naturally Speaking that transcribe your spoken word into digital text. We also work with braille embossers and refreshable displays that provide technical independence through the use of braille. We also work with screen magnification technology software like ZoomText and screen reader technologies such as JAWS that we best explain with a demonstration later in our sessions here today. Now, many of these options are designed with visual impairments in mind when they design the piece of technology, but we also work with a wide array of general consumer technologies such as smartphones, tablets, or even Mac computers, and recently, even smart speaker technologies such as the Amazon Echo. We have also seen in our time that technology is constantly evolving and started working with new and really exciting technologies such as wearable technology. During our session today, we will review a sample of all these technologies and see a few of them in action. Now, I have something to ask from you. You do not need to be experts in assistive technology and what MCB does. That's our job. As you're following along, if you choose to take notes, I don't want you to worry that you may miss something important from the presentation. There may be a lot to take in and you're going to have questions both now and later, but the biggest thing I want you to take away from today is to, isn't to memorize everything that I say. It's just to know that the Assistive Technology Unit here at MCB is here for you. We are the subject matter experts and if there's a question we don't have an answer to, we're very good at getting that answer. We have a strong relationship with our vendors and who make a lot of these technologies and they all want their technology to also be successful in addressing the needs of our consumers while working with your organization. So an important item worth writing down is how to reach us here at the AT unit. You can reach me by email at alexander.pooler at mass.gov. And Pooler is spelled P-O-O-L-E-R. You can also contact me by phone at 617-626-7505. During the COVID pandemic, I'm not in my Boston office as much as I used to be, but I do keep office days, usually one to two days a week, while working remotely the others. So this wraps up our introduction part of our session today. Up next, we're going to review how services can be requested and delivered by the AT unit, a review of several pieces of technology, 
And let's hope we'll join us a little bit later on for a brief demo of a few of those items. And then we'll wrap up with some commonly asked questions that I hear often at a number of these presentations we deliver and some that you may have yourself. So again, thank you for your time today. And let's start with a review of how the AT unit works in support of our consumer successful outcomes. And as I mentioned earlier, the technology at MCB works in support of our VR case managers. The most common way that the AT unit gets involved with any particular case is the case manager submits a referral for requests of services to our unit, and depending on where the services are needed, we'll determine which of our AT specialists are assigned. Now, it's possible that depending on where those services are needed, a particular consumer could have two different AT specialists assigned to them. Here's an example. I live in Amesbury in the Merrimack Valley, and the AT specialist assigned to my home would be James Verrill. However, I work in downtown Boston, which means if I were a consumer at MCB and was needed the services at my workplace, Dennis Avery, who covers the Boston area, would be the one assigned to the case. The AT specialist that covers the work location would be the one that works with the consumer and with you. But before we get involved, our unit has to have a referral from the case manager. We always encourage our consumers to maintain contact with the case manager to ensuring that we are doing what we need to address their needs and the needs of the workplace. If you have a consumer in need of services, we ask that you have that consumer reach out to their case manager to make that request. So let's assume that you do have a consumer in need of services, we have a referral in hand from the case manager, and we're ready to get started. What happens next? MCB will be in contact with both the consumer and our employer partners to, contact, to conduct a workplace assessment. During the assessment, we will identify the tasks the consumer will need to perform as part of their job duties, assess the workplace environment, and address any technical or security concerns the consumer or partner may have. And they also begin to identify relevant stakeholders we may need to bring in for a future consultation. Technology isn't a one-size-fits-all approach. While there are a number of technology-based solutions for a variety of issues, we understand that we may be limited from the partner on issues such as workplace or other environmental concerns or the technology we have in mind might, might not be the best fit for the consumer. But our MCB team has a proven track record to find the right technology in training that meets the needs of the consumer as well as the needs of the partner. But step one before we can start, I mentioned this before, the consumer needs to reach out to the case manager at MCB to start the process. Now, there are instances where MCB can work directly with a partner such as yourself before a consumer reaches out to us. First instance comes to mind is events like this right here. We can meet with an organization to provide information, awareness, training, and answer questions you may have about working with our consumers and with assistive technology or MCB in general. Before COVID, Joe Pizan and I would occasionally visit organizations from financial services, healthcare, education, to nonprofits to offer in-service for their employees to explain what we do, demonstrate some of the technology we have at our disposal, and answer questions you may have in a supportive environment. These are great events for our general office staff to hiring managers to demonstrate how assistive technology paired with our consumer will allow them to do many tasks that otherwise might be thought to be too difficult or impossible to complete. That is a more general way that the AT unit and MCB can be involved with the organization directly. Another is a little bit more technical. Later in our session, we're going to see a piece of software called JAWS in action. JAWS stands for Jobs Access with Speech. It's a computer screen reader program for Microsoft Windows that allows blind and visually impaired users to read screen readers, either read a screen, sorry, either through a text-to-speech output or by a refreshable Braille display. Essentially, JAWS renders a computer desktop accessible to someone with limited to no usable sight through the use of keyboard shortcuts. These shortcuts are kept as constant as possible throughout the program, but the very high number of functions needed to fluently use modern computer software effectively requires the end user to memorize the specific keystrokes and occasionally have to map them out. Virtually, every aspect of JAWS can be customized by the user, including all the keystrokes. JAWS is also includes a scripting language to automate certain tasks and make more complex modifications to computer's behavior. And the scripting language is what I'd like to focus on here right now. Many organizations have either proprietary or highly customized databases that JAWS will not work with out of the box and will require some level of scripting to enable those databases to become more accessible. In addition to the AT staff we have here at MCB, we also have local contract partners that are able to do more specific work with our consumers. And one such partner specializes in working with JAWS to ensure a local database is accessible. If you have questions about your database or other proprietary software or programs, even if it's something that's out of the box, and wanted to know if it could be possibly made adaptable by JAWS for somebody to use that program with those programs, we can have a discussion about that and have an assessment completed to see what the potential is. 
Up next, we're going to start looking at some of the more common system technology that we provide. And we're going to start with the most common piece of equipment we deploy, the handheld video magnification device. Handheld video magnification, or handheld CCTV, is one of the more common assistive technology items we deploy for our consumers. Something to keep in mind, legal blindness is not the same as being without usable sight. In Massachusetts, the definition of legal blindness is 2200 in the best eye, and many people we serve are near that threshold, and many of us would be if it were not for eyeglasses. Without my eyeglasses, I would simply be at that 2200 threshold without having these. Are there many things I can do without my glasses? Yes, uh, I could walk around, um, I can avoid large objects, um, I can interact with some, some items. Can I drive? Absolutely not, I can't read the road signs. Um, can I reprint a material in front of me? Um, only if I get close enough, and close enough for me is really about six inches. What assistive technology does is it finds technology-based solutions to address issues like that. So while I can't read a newspaper without my glasses unless it's within probably about six inches of my face, Video magnification can enlarge the image so I can read the print from a more comfortable distance. As you follow this demonstration, I want you to focus to be on the use and capabilities of the devices and not the brand name or type of the devices. We work with a variety of different manufacturers of these devices, and when it comes to video magnification, all the devices will do just that at the bare minimum, magnify. But they're used and they are packed with other features that do vary from unit to unit. When the AT unit completes its initial assessment of a consumer, we're going to have a clearer understanding of the needs of both the consumer and the employment partner that will determine which of these units consumer might get. And there are lots of options. So as an example, this is a video magnification device from a company called Enhanced Vision. This is a similar device from Optelec. This is from Eschenbach. This is from Humanware. This is from Freedom Scientific. As well as this one, which is a larger version of the previous device that I just showed. And when I'm talking about larger devices, they can be anything from four and a half inches to five inches in screen diameter, uh, seven inches, nine inches. We even have larger ones, such as this here from Optelec. The device that we're going to show today, though, is this device here. This is the Ruby handheld video magnifying device. This is a pretty standard item that we deploy with our consumers. I'm going to show you some of the capabilities and some of the options that the device has. And again, don't worry so much about the name or brand of the device. We, again, have a lot of different items that are here. And eventually, when we're working with the consumer, we're going to determine what's the best item for them based on their needs and based on what you're looking for them to do as the, they're a part of your organization. So let's go ahead and look at the Ruby handheld CCTV and go over some of the capabilities and what it's able to do. So this is the Ruby handheld CCTV video magnifier from Freedom Scientific. The power button is here. This changes the mode. This changes the magnification. And this button here takes a still image that you can bring in closer to change the magnification or the mode color options on there. We'll show that a little bit later on. It's fairly lightweight and small. Handle comes out. Underneath the unit, there are LED lights here and here. And what I like most about this unit is when I just remove the battery cover, we actually have AAA rechargeable batteries that are in here. Now, a lot of handheld units today have proprietary batteries that are quite difficult to replace, but on this unit here, you just have standard AAA rechargeable batteries. And if in a pinch and you don't have access to those and these batteries don't work anymore or you're not able to recharge, you're able to actually buy regular alkaline AAA batteries and plug them in and get some use out of that. So again, this is the Ruby handheld CCTV video magnifier from Freedom Scientific. And now let's look at a couple of options and see how it actually works. So how this device works, power button is upper here. When I press that, the LED lights at the bottom illuminate and that's really great in low lighting situations. 
we have magnification here. This changes color modes. And this is going to take a still image from a distance. So an example for how that's going to work, press this little red button here with the camera on it. And I can actually bring that image closer and still manipulate it. And that's really helpful whenever you need to look at an object that is a little further away than arm's length maybe, and then bring that back and then still be able to magnify it up close if that is what you need. So we have, again, general magnification button on that. And this one can also collapse down and allow for some spot reading as well. And this changes the different color options. So this is an enhanced positive where it's a straight black and white, but it's maxed out the white background and the darker letters. This is an enhanced negative, so it's an inverse of the previous. This is a black background with yellow lettering and a full color image. One feature this device has that not everybody is comfortable with is the image capture feature. And I'll show that one more time about how that works. So I take the device, I hover over a target area, I take a photograph of it. In this case, I'm bringing it up closer to the camera, but this could be up closer to maybe uh, somebody's face. And I can increase the magnification for basically for ease of use of, of reading something that might be a little further away. This particular device here will store up to 15 images. And we do recognize that not all of our employment partners are comfortable with having a device in the hands of employees that are able to capture images, especially in more sensitive areas. We do work with a number of our consumers who work in a variety of government and other organizations where security is a paramount concern for them. We do have the ability to work with our manufacturers to actually have some of these devices be built for MCB consumers that disable that camera feature. So just because you may come across something that you are not comfortable with on here because it's an issue with your security, don't hesitate about letting us know that. We may have an option that we're able to work with with our partners to find either the, a better device that's going to eliminate that security concern or have a device that's built absolutely for the consumer that's going to remove that ability on there. So again, this is the handheld video magnifier. This is one of the more common items that we deploy for our consumers. And this is really just something that is for quick and easy use to be able to enlarge printed material so you can read that. Now next, we're gonna review its bigger brother, the desktop video magnifier. Just generally the same thing, but one thing I want you to look at on here when I turn this back on is for the ease of use of this device and how it works. It is rather limited about how much text you can get onto it at any given time. So next we're gonna look at something that's gonna be a little bit larger that our consumers use as well. So this is the big brother to the handheld CCTV I just demonstrated. This is the Merlin from Enhanced Vision. Uh, basically it does the exact same things that the handheld does, but it's also got a much larger screen. Um, it's on a desktop here, so we can do a better job of reading larger amounts of material. Uh, just like the handheld CCTV, so we have a large variety of these available with all having different options. And we will work with the consumer and with you to determine what is going to be the best possible desktop CCTV for a consumer. So we're going to take a look at the Merlin from Enhanced Vision desktop CCTV. So the Merlin from Enhanced Vision has an ergonomic design. It's got a flexible desktop magnifier that allows you to pivot and adjust the screen for the most comfortable viewing positions. Merlin screens easily pivot both vertically and horizontally and most of the other units that we sit we deploy to our consumers do the same as well. This unit here has seven different viewing options for both contrast and brightness. 
magnification goes from 2.7 to 85x depending on the screen size. This is computer compatible with a toggle capability, which basically means is you can actually put this on your desktop and rather than having a standard monitor to use for this machine, there is an input on the back of the device that you can run the video from your computer CPU directly in this unit with a switch that will flip from viewing of the computer to viewing for the CCTV, which is really great if you have a limited amount of space. This has 28 customizable, programmable, color select options available. It has an autofocus on it. The autofocus will basically focus on the nearest object. So where it is right now, if I were to bring this up closer to the camera, it's going to automatically focus and adjust for what's the nearest option. It also has an option to lock that out, which is important if you are going to be writing maybe underneath the machine. If you have documents that you need to sign, you don't want to have the camera focusing in on your writing utensil or your hand where you want it to keep the focus on the document that is below. These machines come with either a 20, 22, or 24 inch LCD monitor. They come fully assembled in a box, so this is one of those things that literally comes straight out of the box, right on the desktop, plug it in, and it's ready to go. It's got a fast response LCD screen, so there's a minimal amount of ghosting. So when I unlock this, and I move the XY treble around, I don't get a lot of ghosting on this. Ghosting is basically when you're moving an image underneath the, the, the camera quickly of how long it takes for the screen to readjust and refocus. And this has adjustable brightness as well. Button for mode, button for power, knob for size. This is gonna to toggle the down the light that's underneath here, the LCD light, turn it on and off, and brightness. So it's very, very simple and easy to use. Not a lot of bells and whistles, but it's a very reliable unit for our consumers. So for size here, And immediately what you're going to be able to notice compared to this to the handheld CCTV we looked at a little while ago, I can get a lot more text and a lot more clearly that's on here. The handheld unit is good for on the spot reading something that's on the go if you need to do something quickly. But if you have more documents that you need to read or a larger variety of material, reading material you need to go through, something like this is going to be a lot easier on the eyes, a lot easier to use. Mode button here. So this right now is enhanced positive. This is enhanced negative. This is a yellow on blue. And again, some of these should look familiar from the last device, even though these are both from different manufacturers. Black on yellow, yellow on black. And this is the full color option on here. So some of the limitations of devices like this, um, the biggest one is going to be the size and, and the weight. Uh, these devices weigh just over 40 pounds, so it needs to be on a nice, good, sturdy surface. The office cubes we have here at MCB offer us enough space to have both a desktop CCTV and a full computer setup. But depending on the workspace you're in, that's going to be very, very limited, especially right now when we have a lot of, of our consumers working from home or working remotely due to COVID, there may not be enough space available for something of this size. So while it does a great job for enlarging um, print with a much larger screen, you are going to be limited by the size that you have and where you can put these devices. One of the things we do really like about this device though is it is very easy to use and for consumers that have to do a lot of reading, this is a very simple, straightforward device. Um, the high contrast between the buttons that are dark and the background that's light, this is something you're gonna see in a lot of units that are similar to this. Um, same thing with the tactile markers. So, you know, this is concaved, this is bubbled out here a little bit more. Everything is really kind of designed for, for touch. So if somebody is very limited in their vision, we can usually t teach them to center in on the knob and then teach them where the other supporting buttons are for this device. So this is the desktop video magnifier from Enhanced Vision. As I mentioned before, we have a large number of these available from a variety of different manufacturers. Each one does something a little different, but they're generally gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be a large 
or device for video magnifications in the handheld devices. So we saw something very small at the beginning when we had the Ruby handheld. We see something that's quite large right now with this Merlin from the Enhanced Vision. There's something we're going to show you now that kind of splits the difference between two of those and has gained a lot of popularity in the last few years since it's come out and something we call our transportable CCTV. So that's going to be the next device we're going to look at. So if the Ruby is too small and the Merlin is too big, you might find this next device here, the Manlink Zip from LVI, just right. This particular unit has a 13-inch screen, weighs in just over 7 pounds, and comes with an anti-glare service, high-definition camera to produce high-contrast images, and a different light mode for light-sensitive users. The screen is also is high definition and it's easy to adjust for tilting forward and backwards and for height. Low vision adapted screens and an HD screen reading distance camera rotates both vertically and horizontally. And it's got a few other tricks in here that I really, really like and enjoy. Uh, it makes this unit uh, quite versatile for a lot of our consumers. So this CCTV unit is full functional and really no different than the desktop units other than the much smaller size and a few other features that are with it. Still has a zoom feature with high contrast color to show the definition between the button and knobs and the background. This has different color options, just like the other unit does as well. And a home button option here that gets you back to the, your home full color option. But what I really like about this unit is the camera on the back does a few things differently. So let me come back over here. And the camera is currently facing down towards the newspaper that is on the tray. But if I pop it open like this, the camera can become something that can be used at a distance. So if you look at the screen, this is the background that we have right behind it. I'm going to rotate the camera around a little bit. So where this is really handy, really comes in use for some of our consumers, is people who need to have the ability to do some distance viewing. We had a consumer a number of years ago that worked internal security at a defense contractor here in the greater Boston area. And one of the things they needed to do for their job was to be able to identify individuals coming down a corridor and line up their image with their ID badge. Back then, we had to put together several pieces of technology to be able to have the distance viewing and the CCTV so the worker can actually do both options. But now, with a device like this, I can simply just pop this camera out, have it facing outward at that individual, and then pop it back into place, and being able to look at something from a distance and something up near close. This also works great for presentations, uh, because this is battery powered. If you're in a large lecture hall or presentation room, you can be behind uh, some of the other people in front of you and be able to view the presentation from a distance without having to be up very close to the front. It's just a very, very useful unit. And I'll show you the other thing that is really, really impressive about this unit, especially when we compare this to the full-size desktop CCTV. So one of the features I find that I really like about this unit is because it is so lightweight, it's transportable, not just because of that weight, because this unit actually folds down. I'll show you how that happens. So in the back here, we have the camera. I'm going to slide that forward. Then I'm going to take the monitor, pop that out, pull it down, and then collapse it down. This makes this unit much more transportable to where you can almost fit this into a small bag. And again, at seven and a half pounds, this is really not that much more heavy than say a 17 inch laptop or a backpack full of a bunch of textbooks. So again, this is the Magnalink Zip from LVI. This is a portable slash transportable desktop CCTV. Other units that are similar to this do different flow functions with that back camera. Some of them are forward facing, some of them you can actually use an application to control the movements of the camera from right to left. Like everything else for technology, most of these equipments will do generally the same things, but there are gonna be a few different things from each unit, and we'll determine that when we do the assessment of the consumer. 
So up next, we're gonna look at the Cadillac of our desktop CCTVs, and that is gonna be an OCR-equipped CCTV that's gonna have some really, really cool features and kind of start our transition from low vision technology to some of our more general blindness technology. Take a moment and think about your car. No matter what any of you drive, they all perform the same basic function. They get you from point A to point B. However, what makes any, many of your vehicles distinctly different from one another is what options they come with. View magnification devices are very much the same. They all perform the basic same functions, which is magnifying print, but each has its own unique attributes of how they do that and other things that are built in with it. The handhelds could be your subcompact cars. They're reliable and efficient. Merlin desktop, the larger unit that I showed earlier, that's basically your standard sedan. It's a larger unit. It's more comfortable for the end user to use. The Manlink Zip, the device that we showed earlier that was able to fold down, that's transportable. That can be your convertible. The last one I'm going to show you, well, it'll get you from point A to point B, but it's got some additional technology built into it that's going to really change your experience as you're making that journey. This is the Tesla of video magnification or CCTVs. So let's take a look at the Optolex C with speech. So the Clearview with speech is a CCTV first and foremost. Nice good clean image here. We have a knob here for increasing and decreasing magnifications. This has the color options and palettes that are available that you see in other units. But what makes this thing unique, the first item is back here, this arm is placed differently. Most CCTV units have the arm in the back of the units. Why is that important? Well, if you have a larger document, let's say a newspaper, you can now put the full paper underneath the unit without running into the arm to the side or arm to the back because the arm is on the side. That will make a big difference for larger items and larger documents. This has a good, clean, bright image, but what really makes this unit special and unique is the built-in OCR technology. And OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. It's essentially using a digital camera to take a photo of the printed text, process that photo, and read the text back to you. Meaning the Clearview C with speech can instantly convert any printed text into speech. It makes it possible to have access to information in a way that is more comfortable for the consumer to use, especially for long text to read. Let's take a look and see how that looks. So. This screen here is touch screen. What you're gonna do first, you position your text on the tray. I'm gonna to touch here to the bottom corner. Position the text inside the window and tap the screen. I've got my text here and there's a window box here that's yellow and I understand this may not come out perfectly on the video. This gives me the target of where I want my text to be. And right now I am in that target. Yellow box around, my piece of text is directly in the middle of this. The next thing I'm gonna do, I was gonna to touch inside of this window. And what you're gonna hear um, is a sound of almost a camera shutter from say an old 35 millimeter camera. And that's taking a photo of this. You're gonna hear some beeping. That's the computer processor processing the image so it can read it back to you. Volume up. Volume up. Important to register human wear registered sign product and activate your warranty. Please use one of the following methods one, register online at www.humanware.com slash register to call. Okay, I'm going to pause this for a moment here. So, what it did was it took a photograph of the piece of paper. It mapped out all the different zones of the paper that it's going to read through. And as it's reading, it's highlighting in red each word as it's going along. Now, technology like this is really, really accurate. It's about 98 to 99% accurate on the readback. But if you consider a text of hundreds, if not thousands of words, at 98% accuracy, you're still going to miss quite a few of those that are in there. So by having this highlight the text going along, it allows you to track what it's reading on there. So if you have a question that something that doesn't come out quite way, right way, you can go back and review that piece of text. So what this is doing is it is reading this document back to you. 
Call Humanware Customer Service at 1-800-722-3393, USA, or 1-888-723-7273, Canada, 3. Fill in the form below and mail or fax to Humanware at the address below for send up. What we are doing by reading printed text is we're opening up accessibility for a greater number of people with visual impairments. One of the biggest questions I get asked all the time is, Alexander, we are considering um, wanting to engage with MCB to bring on a, a one of your consumers for our organization. And they'll go through all the questions they have. And one of the ones I get asked more often than not is, how are we gonna address reading printed text? This is some of the technology is designed for that. Now, this technology is really designed for somebody who really has either additional eye conditions, maybe they suffer from eye strain, eye fatigue, or, or their eyesight has progressed to a point where they still have some usable sight that the CCTV works, but they've reached that area where maybe we need to look at other technology. So this really bridges more of the low vision technology to the general blindness technology. This CCTV does a lot of different things and opens up a lot more access to people with visual impairments than a regular standard CCTV would have done in the past and really makes it easy for those individuals to complete their job task. So some final specifications on this unit here. Um, it has a continuous magnification between 1.5x and 75x and it does have some additional software we can install into it to actually increase all the way up to 170x with a larger output monitor. It has a high definition 1080p output camera, 24 inch full color touch screen widescreen display. It has 60 different radio voices. So the voice that you heard is just one of 60 different voices that could potentially be heard for this. And that's also important for the consumer so they can find a voice that they find the easiest to use. And for people who come to the United States from other countries, there's even voices in here that have Australian accents, British accents, and this will read in up to 30 different languages. And that's something that this company, Optelec, is constantly trying to strive to improve on, is incorporating new languages for it to read. There are some limitations for that. Uh, we won't get too much into that right now, but I just want you to know that this is something that is a capability of this unit. Uh, it has the ability to save op and open documents off of ST and USB sticks. It has a headphone connector, so even though we were listening to the audio come off of the unit, you can hook in headphones, so this can be listened to quietly at somebody's workstation. It has 16 selectable high contrast color combinations to improve the contrast for overall better visibility, and you can actually save up to four of those for quick and easy use on the unit. And much like the Merlin we showed earlier, this also has the ability through a switch to also act as a computer monitor. So this would be a 24 inch computer monitor um, if we need to be able to do that with a switch that would allow you to say, work on a Word document or on your computer. I need to read something really quick and, and enlarge that. Hit that switch, this turns on the camera and you can start using this as a CCTV. So that's a quick overview of our video magnification options. We looked at everything from something that is portable, that was a subcompact to the Tesla of the video magnification CCTV world, the clear view of speech. Um, and again, to, to stress this, MCB has a wide range of technology. We've only looked at four individual items. We have access to many, many more, and we really work to strive to get the best product in the hands of the consumer based on their personal attributes and how they're able to utilize the technology, and also based on what the job is going to require them to complete. Now we're gonna transition away from low vision technology, and the first time we're gonna look at is that OCR capability, that reading capability that we just saw on this unit. We actually have that as a standalone uh, device that's gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a quick demonstration of one of those and continue on looking at some additional assistive technology. This is the Optolet Clear Reader, a standalone dedicated OCR device. Basically, it's the OCR capability to read text digitally that we saw from the last device, the CCTV video magnifier, but with the bulk of that technology being embedded in the CCTV, this is embedded in a standalone, smaller, more portable device. This device is designed for those who have little to no usable vision, so it's very simple, the buttons are relatively easy to find, and have distinctive shapes based on their functions. So examples for that is, over here for the scan button, it's just a simply an indented button. For volume, it's a knob, goes volume down. Knob. 
Volume down. It's really simple and easy to use. There's a separate button here that's another knob that's much smaller than this one. This knob here is used for the speed of speech. And then we have our play, pause, forward, and back buttons handle at the top. Again, very simple, very easy to use. We just took that technology that was embedded in the previous device, and this is what that technology looks like in a much smaller dedicated device. Within a few seconds, the clear reader scans uh, many magazine articles, newsprint, other printed documents, and reads you in a naturally sounding voice and has options up to 31 different languages. With the clear reader, you have the option to also save and post articles for later on, and you can achieve single and multiple page documents and access them when you need it. So let's take a look to see how this works. Okay, a couple quick specifications on this device. It has built-in speakers here and here, volume control here, speed control, this is the rate of speech, that's this knob here. There is a headphone connector, HDMI port, USB port, SD ports on the side of the device over on this size. And this has a rechargeable lithium ion battery that offers up to five hours of continuous use. The best part about this device though, is it weighs just over five pounds. This is small and fairly easy and portable to use. And the use of the device is incredibly simple. So again, because this is a device that's designed for people with very little to no useful vision, we can't pack in a lot of extras in here. It's gotta be able to quickly execute what functions we needed to do. So I have my document underneath. This is the camera and this arm retracts in and out of the device for transportability. Button here at the top, this button here is the scan button. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the scan button. Important. To register your new human wear registered sign product and activate your warranty, please use one of the following methods. One, register online at www.humanwear.com slash register to call human wear customer service at 1-800-722-3393 USA or 1-888-723-7273. And if I want to pause, I will press Canada, this button here. Three. And from here, if I hit the forward button, fill in the form. What it's doing below. is reading each individual word one at a time going forward. And I can hit the back button. Form the in fill. Does the exact same thing in reverse. Hit the play button again. Fill in the form below and mail or fax to humanware at the address below for. Send us an email at info at humanware.com. First name, address, state, province, cut. And this is the clear reader from Optilec. Again, small, portable, fold the arm down. Turn off the power. That's the plug, take that off. And this is easy to transport. So this is good for transport from location to location. So if you're traveling between home and work, this is quick and easy to use. On the road, going to meetings, same thing. Or even inside of a building, you can go from room to room utilizing the device to give you quick and easy access to reprinted materials as you come in contact with those. So again, this is the Optilec Clear Reader Plus OCR device. We're gonna change this up a little bit now, and I'm proud to introduce Assistant Director of the Assistive Technology Unit, Evan Silver. Evan will be giving you a demonstration of how a visually impaired computer user may work through a few common tasks using a screen reader. He'll also demonstrate how a smartphone can also aid complete some basic tasks. So without further ado, Evan, it's all yours. Hello everybody, my name is Evan and I am the Assistive Technology Director with the Mass Commission for the Blind Assistive Technology Unit. Um, but my job here today is to show all of you kind of a quick run through of how a blind or visually impaired person uses a computer to complete some common tasks. So primarily, um, uh, people like me, I'm visually impaired myself, access a computer through using what's called a screen reader 
or through screen magnification. Now I'm using a screen reader called JAWS. Um, that's an acronym standing for Job Access with Speech. Um, and you'll notice in just a second that it's kind of like a, uh, a, a computerized voice that I can manipulate by using the keyboard. And I'm very familiar with, with touch typing on a keyboard and I know all the keys and um, we um, all blind or visually impaired people learn to use the keyboard very well um, to execute commands using hotkeys um, and keyboard combinations rather than using the mouse or at least trying to limit using the mouse as much as possible. Number one, it's much more efficient. And number two, um, uh, we're able to, you know, issue commands that would um, be impossible to find the icons or the, um, you know, the links or the menu choices if you can't see. So let me just give you a quick example. I am going to open up Microsoft Word. Search box edit, type of text. W-O-R, words, app, D, words, app, enter. Opening dash. Microsoft Word document, document one, document one. Okay. And I'm going to slow down the speech a little bit. Slower, slower, slower. And um, we are in document one dash word print. Okay, it says document one word. Let me just Alt make space, sure. Menu six, leaving menus. It's document a good size. Okay, and because, like I said, I know how to touch type, I'm going to type a sentence. So I will write H E L L O period space T H I S space I S space A N space E X M P L E space O F space a space D O C U M E N T -E -E O space D E M O S E T T R A T E space A O double space A space B L I N D space E R O N space A Y space C C E S S space space O R D space E R O C E S S R period enter. Okay. So I just uh, typed a document. You heard the screen reader reading back. And now I'm going to just uh, show you a, um, some examples of how I can review what I typed. Home. Blank. Blank. Top. Hello. Is it? Period. Hello. OK, I'm going to move word by word. Period. Hello. Period. This is an example of a document to demonstrate how a blind person may access a word misspelled processor. Okay, um, so I heard the JAWS say misspelled and, and it kind of uh, mispronounced a, a word. And I did that on purpose. Um, it's an, uh, I, I know what I did wrong, but we're going to use the spell check feature of Microsoft Word to um, pull up uh, suggestions for correcting this word. Applications, menu, leaving menu, process similar to cold, processor similar to colon, computer, CPU, mainframe, split button, press alt plus down arrow for more options. Okay, that seems to be the right word, but I'm going to I'm going to have it spell it out to me. Cross P R O C E S S O R. Okay. There should be an O in there, so I'm going to go ahead and accept that by hitting enter. Document 1 dash word print edit. Okay, and um, we hear some sound feedback to let me know that um, it did correct the word. Period. Um, Processor. Okay, and and it now it's pronouncing that word correctly. Word A access. Um, may person blind person may Okay, let's just say that um, um, I have the word may there, but I really intended to write the word will. And, um, so I wanna delete that word may. So I wanna, I'm wanna i on the word may, and I'm going to hit the command to delete a word, which is control delete. Access. Okay, and it said access because may disappeared and the cursor landed on the next um, possible uh, character, um, which is um, the next, word and i'm going to type the word will w i l l and hit the space bar space and now i'm going to listen back to the whole sentence again hello this is an example of a document that demonstrates how a blind person will access a word processor blank okay um and so you know i mentioned hotkeys you know so uh you know if i wanted to save this uh, you know a common hotkey is control s um, for save or control p for print all those kinds of things that maybe you know but um, visually impaired people learn uh, many, many more of those. There are, there are a million of them out there, and we try really hard to memorize as many as we can because um, it's much more efficient than trying to find icons on a toolbar to click to, to say to print or, or um, to execute you know, um, 
a copy and paste, you know, with, um, as an example, control C and control V, you know, many, <clears throat> I'm sure many of you are familiar with that. Document one okay. word. I'm going to exit from Microsoft Word. So um, the instead of Xing out, I am going to do the hotkey for closing, which is Alt F4. Alt F4. File name. File name. Edit. It's asking Hello. me if I want to save, and the answer is no. I don't want to save this. Cancel button. To, don't save button to okay, activate. So press just, space bar. I just tab to the don't save button. I'm going to hit click it by hitting the space bar. Space. Zoom. Return to meeting button to activate. Press. Okay. Um. So now let's look at um. Microsoft Excel. Meeting controls to move to an inbox dash seven dots samples for demo. Sample spreadsheet for Sarah dot Excel SX dash Excel. Okay. So I just um, I had open already an Excel spreadsheet to use as a uh, employee um, for demonstration purposes, and I can move around in this spreadsheet by using my four arrow keys and and listen to what's here in this document. I'm sorry, in this spreadsheet. Quarter one B one employees A one. Okay, so I have the title is employees, so I'm going to go down this column. John A two. Okay, there's John. Alexander A three. Alexander. Carol A four. Joe, A5. Okay, and if I want to hear, I'm going to go back up to the top. If I want to hear what the title of the next column is, quarter one, B1. Quarter one. So let's see what data we have for the per first person. So I'm going to go down under quarter one. John, six, B2. Okay, and I heard it say John, and then I heard it say six, B2, which, uh, so B2 is the coordinate of the cell. So let's see if there's anything for quarter two. Quarter two, blank, C2. Nope, it's blank. Okay, so it's ready for me to type in some data in quarter two. Um, but before I do that, let's just go down the previous uh, column for quarter one. Quarter, Alexander, eight, B3. Alexander has eight. Carol, 11, B4. And these are just imaginary widgets of output, you know. Uh, Joe, five, B5. Okay, Joe, five. So, um, and I'm just gonna Employee, do one other quick Alexander, function. Let's A2. just say that, you know, if this was a Employee. list of hundreds of names of of employees and i needed to sort john a2 let's see if i can do this um in short order uh Se select a6 okay um so i wanted to sort these um by john a2 quarter one six B select B6. the um by who has the most output um it's down to the least output so let's see if this will work applications menu cut uh, cop Paste special dot 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 insert dot 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 delete dot clear contents and what I did is I right click I did the equivalent of right clicking with the mouse which is I hit the applications key on the keyboard quick analysis two filter sub sort sub menu oh okay there's the sort menu I'm gonna open that sort smallest to sort largest to smallest oh okay and I'm gonna sort largest to smallest I'm gonna hit enter on that enter leaving menus expand the select expand the select enter selected ring okay and now so it should have um rearranged the Carol, A2. The, inf the, um, the, the employees. Employees, A1. So let's Carol, see. A2. So there's Carol, and let's see what her output was. Quarter 1, 11, B2. So she had 11. Alexander, 8, B3. Alexander is 8, so he's next in line. John, 6, B4. John had 6. Joe, 5, B5. Joe had 5, so it rearranged. So that's just an example of how um, a visually impaired person um, can access, to access Excel. Let me close that. Alt F4, Microsoft Excel. Want to save your changes to samples? Okay, and I do not want to save. Cancel button to active. Don't save button space. Zoom. Return to meeting button. To... All right. And now, uh, PowerPoint. Meeting controls to move to a night inbox dash seven samples for demo. MCB dash town hall presentation dash July 2020. Okay. So I have a PowerPoint presentation that's open here. Um, and uh, if I want to review um, it's a, uh, you know, um, it, you know, a common experience is that you attend a meeting um, and someone sends you a PowerPoint presentation um, for you to review or to read through. Um, so I have the PowerPoint open. I'm going to put it in presentation mode. Um, so the hotkey for that is the F5 key. F5. Slide one dash Massachusetts Commission for the Blind Virtual Town Hall and dash July 10th, 10 comma. Okay, and I'm going to slow it down a little bit since we're hearing a little more text. Let's see. Slower, slower. Okay. Slide one dash Massachusetts Commission for the Blind Virtual Massachusetts Heading Level One Massachusetts Commission for the Blind Virtual. Okay, that's the first slide. Now I'm going to advance to the second slide. Slide two. Welcome, Commissioner David D. Arcangelo, white MCB logo with braille above MCB and Massachusetts Commission for the Blind underneath image. Okay, and it, um, so it, uh, it 
read the name and it gave me someone typed in uh, an audio, I'm sorry, a, um, a description of the um, image that's there. I'll just go one more slide in. Page down. Slide three, assistive technology, director of assistive technology, Alexander Pooler. Okay, and there's another. Um, let me just go, I'll go a few more just to see if we can get some actual content. Page, page, page down. As notes, slide six, contact the help desk, list of three items, bullet six, list of three. Slide six, contact the help desk, list of three items, bullet 617-626-7401, bullet Monday through Friday, bullet 8.45 a.m. to 5 p.m. EDT. Okay, and all I'm doing is just arrowing through the document. Now I can move word by word, just like I can in Microsoft Word. M2. I'm moving word by word now. Five p.m. Or I could spell out a word by arrowing letter by letter. Five o'clock. Two. M. Space. A. M. Space. Am. The word am is spelled am. I, that's what I've learned. Okay. So that is how I would review a, a PowerPoint document. Escape. MCB dash town hall. PowerPoint presentation. Alt F4. Return to meeting button to activate press space bar. All right. And um, task switching meeting controls to move to inbox dash Evan dot silver. So here's an here's my Outlook email. Unread. Ventura. And I am going to um, start a new email. Control N. Untitled. So Control N for new email. And um, to edit. Okay. So I will send one to. Um, actually, I'll send one to Alexander Pooler, who I think you're hearing from. Um, during this presentation as well. P O O L E R. Enter. C C to edit. Pooler Alexander. Le C C edit. Type in text. Subject. J U S E S E N D I N G space. T E S E space E N A I L. Semi space. P N E A S E D I S R E G A R D. Exclaim. Just sending test email. Semicolon. Please disregard. Dash. Okay. And I will type um, a quick message. H-E-L-O, period, space. A-O, dust, A-R-E, space, Y-O-U, space, O-I-N-G-T-O-D-A-Y, question. Hello, how are you doing today? Okay, and then um, if I want to send it, the hotkey in Microsoft Outlook to send is Alt-S, so I'm going to hit that combination of keys. Alt-S, inbox, dash, ever, escape. All right, and that's a quick way to send an email. So I'll just quickly show you a calendar entry. Control Y, go to folder dialog, zero, one, inbox colon one, uh, C, calendar, enter. Dash Evan, dot, Sunday, November, month view, 18, Friday, October 3rd, Saturday, October 31st, 2020. Okay, so let's look at Saturday, October 31st. I'm gonna uh, put in a, um, an appointment. Control N, untitled dash appointment, title edit, type in text. Title edit. Okay, I'm going to put in virtual. V-I-R-T-U-A-L space T-R-I-C-H-O-R space T-R-E-A-T-I-N-G. Virtual trick-or-treating. Virtual trick-or-treating date picker to act. Start time edit, 8 a.m. type in text. Okay, well. Start time edit, 8 38. Start 8 a.m. is a little early. Let's make it a lot later in the day. Start time edit, 3 p.m. Start time edit, 3 30. And I'm airy. What I'm doing is I'm. Arrowing down through this drop down to pick a time. Start time at 3 p.m. Start start time at 4:30. Start time at 5 p.m. We'll start at 5. And date edit. Date picker. And I'm tabbing to the I'm tabbing through the fields of this dialog box. Date picker button to activate. End time at 5:30 p.m. Type okay, in text. We'll, End time at 6 p.m. So I arrow down to 6 p.m. All day checkbox not. Okay and time zones check. And there are several more fields that I can tab through, but they're not really important right now, so I can just. Go ahead and, and save this. Alt S. Calendar. Again, that's Alt S. And now, Friday, October 30th. Um, I think we heard a noise that indicates that um, because that appointment has already passed, that, that it's reminding me that it exists. Thursday, Friday, October 30th, so 2020. Let's look on two events. Saturday, October 31st, 2020. One event, one busy. Okay, so it says on October 31st. Um, I have one event, so I'm going to hit the tab key to see what the name of that event is. Virtual trick or treating, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, October 31st, 2020. Time busy. Organizer Silver. Evan left parent. MCB right parent. Seven of 22. All right, and it told me what it was, and and I could hit enter to open it up and read more about it if I had, if there were notes or 
or somehow some attachment, you know, if someone attached a, um, a presentation for me to review before uh, the big trip, trick or treating event. So, okay, if I want to cancel or close this, I can hit escape. escape. All right. All step four. Zoom. Return to meeting button. So another important thing that um, we all do is access the internet, the World Wide Web. So I am going to open up Windows D folder view list. Um, Microsoft Edge. M, Microsoft support and M, Microsoft Teams. M, Microsoft Edge. Enter. So Microsoft Edge is a web App browser like bar. Uh, Chrome or Firefox. And I want to do a quick Google search. New tab dash personal dash control E left bracket type search term right bracket. Search. Okay, and um, let's see, the new iPhones just came out recently. So let's say I want to read a review of one of the new iPhones. Just so I'm going to search for I P A O N E space one two selected review space selected R E V I E W review and I'll hit enter because I'm enter, in the search selected, field for HTTPS Google. If and well review dash Google. If and well heading link skip to search modes at searchers web results heading okay, and I'm moving through the results um, on this Google search results page by hitting. Um, this is something that's kind of unique to screen readers, but I'm hitting the letter H, and H stands for heading. So I'm moving from heading to heading. Apple iPhone web results, Apple iPhone 12 review vertical bar, PC Mac visited heading level three link. Okay, and there's there's a review from PC Mag, PC Magazine. So enter, enter on that reviewed. And let's see if we can read a little bit. Apple iPhone 12 review vertical bar, PC Mac dash Microsoft Edge, link fastest mo Apple. Okay, and... Um, Apple iPhone. You know, often on a, on a commercial websites, there's lots of ads and things like that. That as we're reading through with the voice, you know, I you know I'll hear lots of links and and um, sort of misdirections and you know um, uh, um, pop ups and things like that. So I'm going to activate some a feature that's in most browsers these days called Reader View. F9 immersive reader dash personal dash Microsoft. And references. that usually helps. Um, uh, us to be able to sort of read the the content with all, without all the noise um, uh, interfering with the signal. Grammar reading preferences on PIM may heading the most popular phone gets even better, but with... Okay, and so here it is. Um, I'm gonna, just for fun, I'm gonna try switching to a different voice so you guys can hear an example of a slightly higher quality voice. Select the voice pro Microsoft Mo Sat Sat Vocalizer, it's Samantha Vocalizer Expressive Premium 6 of... Heading level one Apple iPhone 12 review. The most popular phone gets even better, but which one to choose? HTTP article, hard dash edged phones for a hard dash edged year. App network connectivity to the trick is figuring out which one network connect the trick. I'm, I'm linked to 5G guy. And during the iPhone 12 launch, Apple talked about 5G a lot. The iPhone 12 is the best 5G phone so far, but link Verizon's and link it and tease. So dash called quote nationwide quote 5G aren't worth your time. T-Mobile's mid-dash band 5G does deliver improved performance, but T-Mobile. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. Um, you might have heard it say, as it was reading, you might have heard it, uh, the voice say, link this and link that. And of course, when we hear the word link, that you know means that it's um, a hyperlink. Those words that it's uh, um, indicating are linked. Those can be activated by clicking them, and you know, I can click them by hitting the Enter key on those. Um, and uh, so that is how I do um, uh, research and, and read documents and, of course, read the news and, and um, uh, do online banking and, um, you know, uh, access our, um, the database where, that I, um, uh, where I work uh, is, an, is a web-based database. So, um, you know, where I'm able to um, access that by using all of the features of of the JAWS screen reader that allows us to access um, the web. So let me close that. Alt F4, desktop. Okay, and just, I will show you one other cool little feature that's developing um, in the, in the, just in the last year or so um, with some of these screen readers. Um, and that is making use of artificial intelligence or, or machine learning is another, another term for that to help us to 
understand images and pictures. Choose home use, zoom, meeting controls, samples for demo, samples, IMG underline eight. Okay, so I have a picture here. Um, and all the, uh, all I know about this picture is that it is called the following. IMG underline 8065.jpg, one slash seven slash 2000. Okay, so that doesn't tell me much. Um, there's a thumbnail of it. If I hit enter, I'd be able to open it and you'd be able to see the whole thing. But bef um, before I open it and let you see it, I'm going to ask JAWS to go out to uh, the internet, to the cloud, and access the um, artificial intelligence servers that are out there and um, to try to do its best to describe this picture to me using the resources that the JAW screen reader um, can um, access. Space. So, let's see. P, Picture Smart. The, the name of this feature is Picture Smart. Picture Smart is in progress. Okay. It's working. MCB dash town hall presentation dash July IMG underline 8065.jpg one of three MCB IMG underline Okay, let me try it again. Space P picture smart picture smart is in progress. Heading level two caption is a close up of of there it goes. Okay. Heading level two caption is a this is this is what it um, found out about this picture. Um, it's Heading level three, these tags describe the photo. Building, caramel color, floor, flooring, hard, hardwood, indoor, laminate flooring, plywood, property, varnish, wood, wood flooring, wood stain. Okay, so it apparently has something to do with wood and flooring. Heading level three, these tags probably describe the photo. Cabinetry, drawer, furniture, plank, remodel, wooden. Okay, cabinetry, and drawers. Heading level three, these tags possibly describe the photo. Chest of drawers, ten. Chest of drawers, 10. Okay, and that's that's all that it could find. Um, that's, Escape. IMG. That's could do. And let's IMG see. underline 8,000. Enter. Open the picture Photos. a little bit better for you. IMG and underline. That is what the picture looks Photos. like. Photos. Okay. Alt F4. Samples for demo. All right. So thank you for listening. And that is all for now. Joss Homie. Thank you very much, Evan, for that demonstration. And the final piece of technology we're going to look at today is ZoomText, screen magnification software for your PC computer. ZoomText Magnifier Reader is fully integrated magnification and reading program tailored for low vision users. The Magnifier Reader enlarges and enhances everything on your computer screen, echoes the typing and its essential program services, and automatically reads documents, web pages, and email. Full range magnification for this is up to 36x, and unlike some other magnifiers that pixelate text as you continue to increase magnification, Zoom text re-images most text to preserve the sharpness and clarity of the alphanumeric characters you're trying to read. So this is one of those programs that is probably best demonstrated in person, but I'm going to do the best that I can to actually show how this looks through a demonstration. So one limitations we have with trying to do a demonstration with a product like ZoomText remotely is it's really difficult for you to get a good feel for how it actually looks without actually being up close and looking at the screen and being able to compare what the image looks like when we're not enhancing it, utilizing ZoomText versus just using the magnification. So I'll do the best that I can to kind of show you here on the screen of really what this looks like. And I'll kind of talk through a few of the options and a few of the uh, things that are being displayed on the screen. So. Right now, I've got a standard Excel spreadsheet opened up, and I've already got ZoomText installed on this computer. I'm going to open up the ZoomText program. ZoomText enable. Welcome to ZoomText 2018. We know you're eager to start using ZoomText. To help you get started, below is a list of the most important hot commands that every user should know. For descriptions and quick start instructions on Zoom Text's essential features, read the Getting Started with Zoom Text 2018 topic in the Zoom Text Help System or User Guide. Zoom Text hot commands that every user should know Zoom in out caps lock plus up down zoom to 1x, toggle, 
Caps Lock Plus Enter Enhance Colors On Off Caps Lock Plus C Show User Interface Caps Lock Plus C T R L Plus Zoom Text Magnifier Reader. So basically what's there is it's Zoom telling you what the more common hockey commands are able to use. So you have to keep going back to the dialog box that has all this built on there. So this is kind of almost like a remote control on this screen here. So I've got the ability to increase the zoom magnification. Right now, this is at 2x, but I can increase 2 .2 up. 2.5, 2.3, 3.4, 4.5, 4 .5, I don't know if you can tell, but everything 5, is absolutely enlarging 6, with that. 7, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 3.5. We can change the color output. Color. So if you remember when we talked a little bit about some of the desktop CCTVs that have uh, different color options, based on your eye condition, you may be able to read text much more clearly and easily based on what colors you're looking at. You might have sensitivity to certain colors. You might have some color blindness. Uh, you might be light sensitive to the brightness of it. So this is going to allow you to change some of that. North scheme. One color. So this is an inverted brightness. So we now have a darker background with the lighter text on the front. North scheme check. Two invert one color. Scheme check one two color. North color enhancements to save north scheme. One two for color. This is yellow text on a black background. Normal color enhancements to custom scheme. Wall four, blue color. This is everything pretty much in shades of blue. Scheme custom, scheme check normal color enhancements disabled. We can also change the pointer. So if you can look on the screen right now, it's currently a large yellow pointer with black outlines. Pointer. Scheme check. Wall but two, I could go one, with pointer this where there is a subtle crosshairs on this and they may help you track your pointer on the screen more easily scheme check one two red pointer this is one of the red pointer with a red circle again this might be something that allows the end user to be able to track the mouse pointer more easily than just looking at the standard pointer that it's on here pointer enhancements disabled normal pointer enhancements disabled Zip code city, town, neighborhood, county, MA, last saved by user. So one of the things you may also notice is this is reading some of the text to you. And this is a feature you can disable. But again, it's one of those things that's kind of helping you track where you are and being able to know what's on the screen. So. Haydenville. Four, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm using one of those hockey commands right now to be able to increase the magnification. Drury, Norwood, East Taunton, 20,555, Bristol. As you see, as I'm going off in the cursor to text, I'm going off the screen, it's repositioning the focus on the screen, so we're trying to keep whatever I am trying to read as close as possible to the middle of the Northern. screen. Berkshire, Hampshire. 29,545, 17,545, 50,285, 8, 2, 2 1.6, smart speaker overview, word, 2, 2, 2.7 page, A, T, and this is currently right now reading individual space, letters, I, F, if that's something that we need to have, space, yeah, I, space, T, A, H, capital W. The University of Tennessee, Knoxville and one more page, profile one, the University of Tennessee, Knoxville and one more page, profile one, Microsoft Edge. Address and search bar HTTPS colon slash slash, add this page to favorites, CTRL, favorite collection profile settings skip to main content the university of tennessee knoxville the so this university is me giving a uh, shameless this plug for my uh, undergraduate alma mater Cope, modified bus with architecture grad student living in the dream caleb brackney's unique mobile home embodies the transformative ideals 
philosophies, and skills he has nurtured as a graduate student at Zoom Text Magnifier Reader Profession, Zoom Text 2008, Zoom Text Magnifier Reader Profession. So, very again, very, very quick overview of what Zoom Text has and what it's able to do. Um, this is something, again, that's much, much better probably to look at in person. But the key takeaway from this is we want you to know that there are video magnification programs that we can put onto a computer to allow somebody with low vision to be able to clearly read the text that's on there. Now, this is a screen that's 24 inches. We can go higher than that if necessary for certain consumers. And this is something that is really, really a very vital tool and one of our more common tools that we deploy with our consumers who are working um, in competitive jobs. So again, this is the Zoom Text program running on Microsoft Windows. I've said this several times and it's worth repeating. You do not need to know everything that we've just shared. What's important is to know that MCB and the Assistive Technology Unit are a resource here for you. In the time we have today, we've only scratched the surface of what kind of technologies are out there to help those with visual impairments. Other technologies we get a chance to really discuss today is the old and venerable Perkins typewriter for typing out in Braille. Refresher Braille Bell displays. High contrast large print keyboards. Consumer technologies such as iPads, and Amazon smart speakers. And we're also starting to work with new and exciting technologies such as wearable technology that will allow for distance viewing. This is an example of one of those right now that we're working with. And these are the type of technologies that we really think are going to help revolutionize what we're able to do for our consumers in the workplace will allow them greater independence and flexibility to do an even wider array of job tasks. Now, there are a few commonly asked questions we get, and I think some of you may have some of these, so I'd like to go ahead and try to answer those. The most common question we got prior to COVID was, how much does this cost? And the answer is, nothing. MCB is a state agency, and the work we do with our VR consumers is funded through federal grants from the United States Department of Education. This also covers assistive technology and training from my unit. Now, obviously, it's a very simple answer, and there are a lot of nuances to this as well. If you have additional questions, please reach back out to MCB for a more detailed explanation. The other question we get a lot of late is, what are we doing in response to COVID, and how are we able to work with our consumers like many of you, a lot has changed since March 2020, and the AT unit continues to evolve our approach with safety of our consumers, our partners, our staff, and all relevant stakeholders in mind. This has forced us to get rather creative in our approach, but we continue to find new ways to work with our stakeholders. This can either be through contact with drop of the technology, leveraging video conferencing that the AT unit may be able to use, or finding other ways to address the needs of both our consumers and their workplaces. Since every situation is unique, there is no cookie cutter approach to working with our consumers and partners during this time. But we are finding ways, and I encourage you, if you would like additional inf information or engagement from our unit, please reach out to us. Let's have that conversation, and let's see what we can do. Everyone, this brings us to the end of our video, and I'd like to thank you for your time and for everybody back at MCB for the support in making this presentation possible. Please feel free to reach out to me with any additional questions you may have, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.